Hello and welcome. I'm Michael Pierce and this is The Human Condition. Today we are talking about common mistakes in functional medicine and holistic medicine. When a person decides to do holistic medicine, sometimes they let their critical thinking go out the window. They abandon the tenets of medicine that are strong and good, which are proper history taking, physical examination, imaging that's appropriate, and lab testing that's appropriate. And so if you are angry and upset with modern medicine, I understand that. And if you're embracing alternative medicine, I understand that well too. Don't throw out the concepts of good medicine that are timeless, those ones that I just mentioned. If you have a alternative doctor, please ask him or her to go through and redo your history from scratch, from birth, your physical examination as deeply as possible, your laboratory tests, and your imaging from a holistic perspective. Just because you've gone holistic doesn't mean that you abandoned those four things. So it's okay to go into energy medicine and it's okay to go into aromatherapy and it's okay to go into all kinds of unscientific, non-scientific, less scientific things that are out there. I don't have a problem with that as long as you don't abandon the science part, which is to say looking at those basics correctly first. And just because a modern medical doctor or a orthodox medical doctor has provided for a, a blood test and a physical exam for you doesn't mean you've had a complete blood test or a complete physical exam. So go to somebody who knows whether it be medical or not, doesn't matter to me, and make sure they've really, really checked you out. Because in today's system, in America at least, in the United States, there's an incentive for the doctor to get to a diagnosis code. And so what they do is they, and, and chiropractors do it too, they do a quick intake, a quick history, a quick exam. They get to a diagnosis that labels you, that gets them paid, and it gets them to a procedure code that they can charge for and get paid for, and then the next patient comes in. And so that's, um, that's factory medicine, and it's, it's okay for probably the 80-20 rule. It's not a bad idea to develop a very efficient system that takes care of most people, and I, I don't object to that as long as there's a way to catch those 15 to 20 percent of the people that don't fit that model and kind of shunt them off down a side path where there's more intense workup being done. Because we have to balance efficiency and cost effectiveness with safety and efficacy and accuracy in medicine. So while I, I don't think that every patient needs this wildly intense workup, m most people don't. There needs to be a system that flags those people that didn't get it the first time and they need to find out what their actual diagnosis and treatment is because they're more complex and they don't know who they are and the doctor doesn't know who they are. In fact, any doctor that tells you he knows at the beginning who the tough patients are doesn't know what they're doing because it's, it, it's, there are some patients that you know right away, but there are just as many, if not more, patients that come in. You don't know they're going to be a tough one until you've gotten into it. You might have them come in and, and categorize them as this is going to be a home run, easy patient. And then Eight or 10 weeks later, you're going, hmm, this is not right. And then two years later, you're going, oh my God, this is not what I expected. So there's just no way to absolutely predict who's going to be a, a difficult, complex patient. And I don't mean that the patient is a difficult in the head. I mean that they're technically difficult to diagnose, technically difficult to treat. And that's usually some combination of things like SNPs and poisoning and toxicity and genes and uh, environment and childhood and, and, you know, a bunch of factors that might all come together. Mold is certainly a big deal in, in my world. So just realize that you don't want to throw away science when you're doing alternative medicine. Alternative medicine is still based on science. And if there's an area that we don't understand, we want to make sure that we didn't miss something else. Like you don't want to go and do a bunch of energy medicine when you have an undiagnosed anemia. That would be a dumb idea. You don't want to go off and do a bunch of, you know, Reiki healing therapy when you have a bleeding ulcer in your stomach that needs to have antibiotics. You don't want to go off and have a chiropractor do a bunch of brain exercises when you have an ear infection. It just doesn't make sense. So you really want to take a look and do some critical thinking about what do I have, what do I not have? And I guess I'll end on the fact that the most important factor here is to 
do things that can help you safely eliminate from the field what you don't have. Like, I'm sure I don't have an ear infection. I'm sure I don't have an ulcer. These are things that can be done by combining and using integrated practices of medicine and chiropractic and alternative medicine and naturopathy and all of those wonderful things like acupuncture and holistic medicine and psychology. We just want to make sure that we realize that when a doctor asks you a question, the answer is, is a dead end and it doesn't lead anywhere. That's good because that helps us gather information that tells us, oh, you don't have that clinical problem. And we can, we can really know that it isn't there. When I look back on charts and I see people's charts, I, I sometimes look and I see that no one actually investigated this patient to see if they had an ulcer or not. Or no one actually investigated to see if this person had a blown disc in their neck. Or no one ever checked to see if they had an ear infection, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So you never know until you check and you eliminate from the field certain things. So that's another reason to have thoroughness and scientific thinking, even in the world of alternative medicine. <laughs>